Yeah. Okay, let's see what some of the questions are. Even like, um, when you like a new Christian in Christ and um, you have like all these different obstacles coming up against you, like this one person is telling you one thing and this other person is telling you one thing because who is this person today? And um, how would that person like um, seek the right path? You know, like um, they come under their pastor and then there's so much around them that say, well, so and so, you know, this is how you go, that's how you go. Mm-hmm. They're so confused because they go like back and forth plus between the pastor and um, how do they approach the Lord with? To know what's right? Yeah. When everybody's coming with different opinions and with different ideas and different things? Well, um, there's many, many different ways. Let me see if I understand. Somebody comes and, and tells you something. Mm-hmm. Okay. Pertaining to the Word of God. I say like if the pastor preaches a sermon. Mm-hmm. Like they talking about just attire or something pertaining to the word that how he's supposed to be, and then there's a group that comes and say, "No, you're supposed to do this way." And then there's a group over here go, "No, you're supposed to do it this way." And the pastor says one thing, so you're in the middle, surrounded by all these different things, you know. Mm-hmm. And you're new, new, new in Christ. Even you have people that's not new in Christ that still be so confused. How do they approach the Lord to know well which is the right path? Who is you using, Lord, to lead me to the right path? Mm-hmm. Because I might be ignorant to a, a degree that I have to have, like, you know, you can lead us or worse to lead us. Where there's other people that, you know, you have different ministry, well, this minister, deacon, so and so, so everybody is like overriding the pastor. Okay. Um, now, in Christ's gospel, there wouldn't be any problem. And we can, we'll go into that too. We'll talk maybe about the witness a little bit if you want to later on. But um, let's go. We can start out. Y'all, y'all are new, everybody except Susan, right? All of you are fairly new in the message. You just got in a few years ago. Mm-hmm. Have you gotten any of the old, old tapes? Have you started way back? Way back, number one, number two, number three? Yes. The SP tapes and all of these? Mm-hmm. Okay. Then I'll just hit some things, and, and um, if you haven't seen them, then shout at me, and we'll go into them in more in detail, okay? But we can, we can review some things and understand um, some of God's Word that you already know, but I'll just bring it to your remembrance and to your mind. Can everybody see the, the board? Yes, ma'am. Brother Kathy, can you see? Okay. Let's go to 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. Amen. Famous foundational word. 2 Timothy three sixteen and 17. <clears throat> Second Timothy three sixteen and seventeen. Together, all Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Amen. Amen. So here we have the Word of God, okay? And it says the Word of God is profitable for doctrine, doctrine, reproof, correction, instruction instruction in righteousness. Okay? And it says how much Scripture? All Scripture. All means from? Genesis to Revelation. Okay. (laughs) All. It's not there. All scripture is profitable from Genesis to Revelation for the man of God, for our spiritual inner man. And one of the things that, that I liked from the very beginning in the crucified way is the fact that the crucified way is a, is a way that's built on the word of God. It's not built on, on a lot of man's opinions. And even in the very, very beginning, oh, Sister X is hitting a lot of mountain peaks now so she's not getting a lot of the some of the things that she used to talk on and the way she used to talk a lot of times but um, she she in the very beginning when I got in the message she would she would say take your Bible you've got two knees you've got a Bible you've got a prayer closet you can go and you can see if the things that I'm telling you are true or not 
and I like that because I was I was skeptical. I didn't know about women preachers, and I didn't know about this weird group over here, and you know all the things that they're doing. And I was I was pretty I was wary of of what was going on. But when she said, "You take your Bible and you start studying your Bible," and as I as I watched through the years the way the Word of God has gone, and she, the 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 thing that we can stand on, the only thing that we can stand on is the Word of God. This is the only thing that's going to get us to where we want to go. And the Word of God is the only thing that can, that can show us where we are right now and answer our questions for right now. Okay? And she's been teaching on the, on the spiritual tabernacle recently. And um, some things just clicked in my mind about the spiritual tabernacle. But before we go there, let's go to 1 Corinthians 10. <clears throat> 1 Corinthians 10. Um, verse 4. 1 Corinthians 10, verse 4. Amen? Amen. Together? And did all drink the same spiritual drink, for they drink of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. And who is Christ? The rock. Okay, and who is the rock? Let's go to Deuteronomy. 32. Did y'all bring notebooks and paper? Uh oh. You got some? Good. Oh, I don't know if I've got. Here in Deuteronomy, it says, in Deuteronomy and Corinthians, it says that there was a spiritual rock and that rock was Christ. And if you notice here, rock is with a capital R in, in Deuteronomy. Uh, in Deuteronomy. When you, when we, we're going to Deuteronomy 32. But in, in Corinthians, rock is with a capital. Okay? And it says, that rock that followed them was Christ. It wasn't a symbol, right? So in Deuteronomy 32, verse 4, let's read it. He is the rock. His work is perfect. For all his ways are judgment. A God of truth and a God of iniquity. Just and right is he. So it says here that he, speaking of God, was also a God of what? Truth and without iniquity. Mm-hmm. So he's a God of truth. This rock is a fountain of truth, is the originator of truth, is the generator of truth. This rock, now if we can find out more about the rock then we can find out where the truth is amen Amen. and in John 17 17 and Sister X has told us that the word of God is the best commentary for the word of God John 17 17 let's read that all together Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. So what is the truth? The word. Oops. So used to getting in Spanish. The truth is the word. Okay? So rock, Christ, truth, word, all of these are synonyms. And also Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Because the Christ, Christ was inside of Jesus when he was walking here. So he could, he could say that. So he's the living truth. It's not the dead letter truth. It's not just the words here, but it's what's inside of the words. Okay? What's inside of the paper. Amen. That we're going to find, where we're going to find the Christ. Christ is the living. It's the person. Amen. The Bible is, is the paper and the ink. But Christ is the living word of God. And that's... <clears throat> So when, whenever, whenever I speak of the rock, whenever I speak of the word, whenever I speak of the truth, it's all going to mean the same in my mind. So I want it to all connect in yours. Okay? Now if we go to Matthew. Matthew chapter 7. It seems like um, there were people in Jesus' time also that had this problem. 
that you're mentioning now that they didn't know where to go or what to do or how to do it. In verse 24, I'll, I'll start reading to, to explain along the way so we can move along faster. It says, Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and goes his way and does his own thing will be likened unto a wise man. <laughs> Is that the way your Bible reads? No, How does it read? Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. Okay, so he built his, his house on a rock. But this man that's building on a rock, which is Christ, the truth, the word, what is he in particular? A, a hearer and a, a hearer and a doer. So it's not just enough to hear, but you have to do. Okay? A lot of people hear. A lot of people hear the word of God. Our churches are full of them. A lot of people understand the principles. They can get up and give a class. But a doer is the person that's going to be building really upon that rock. It's the person that's going to be getting their roots down inside and, and pulling up the life of that word that's down in there so that it's going to give them the strength that, that they're going to have need of when the rains come, when the winds blow, and when the floods start coming up against them. Okay? And all of these, these uh, the floods and the rains and, and, the, and the, the winds talk of all of these things that are going to come against us. Uh, the, the, the rains speak of affliction coming down on us. And when there's affliction, there's always a lot of opinions. Uh, you, were, you were sinning for that reason it happened. Uh, it's because you weren't doing right over here. That's, that's why such and such happened. Look how God's judging you. You remember Job's friends. <laughs> Job's dear friends. <laughs> you're a big sinner. God's judging you. That's why, that's why you've got all those, all those sores on you. And so there's always, a lot of, there's always a lot of opinions coming around. But if you, have your, if you have your roots down in that rock, that rock is going to be talking to you. This word is going to be speaking to you. And you're going to be knowing what's going on in your life at that time. And you're not going to be tempted to move over here with this crowd or move over here with the devil's wind that's coming and God's forgotten about you. God is judging you. God is uh, angry at you. Huh? <laughs> so, if, but, but if, you, if you know of his, of, his, of his nature because you've learned it in the Word of God, then you're going you're gonna to have your roots in that, in that rock. Your, your roots are going to be growing down inside of that doctrine, that reproof, that correction. And you're going to be, you're gonna become, uh, you're gonna be part of that word. And that word is going to become part of you. Can you see that? Amen. So, that so that you're going to be stabilized. And there's going to come a moment when, when you, don't, you don't have hold of the rock, but the rock has hold of you. Amen. Okay? And that's when you're going to stand stable and strong. And I've told my, my, my people in my classes all the way from Mexico through the years I was down there in Bible Institute when I was up in Jeff and times that I preached off and on and just recently in our, in our leaders class on Fridays. Um, the only thing, the only two things really that are going to hold us in the end times when things get rougher than what they are now, when things get more solitary than what they are now, when we have to stand many, many times, when we'll have to stand many times just by ourselves, what we have of the Word of God inside of us, not up here, but inside of us, that is what's going to hold us when the storms and the troubles and the tribulations and the afflictions come against us. Hallelujah. <laughs> and the, the, the floods, the floods speak of the passions that come up inside of us. Every time there's an affliction... Every time there's affliction, if you're not in the, in the, it rooted down in the, in the Word of God, what's going to come up inside of you? Lord, I praise you. You're blessed and you're holy. Is that what comes up? <laughs> when, you're in the, when you're in the midst of an affliction, something's not going your way, you, 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 you don't have money or your, your car breaks down. Or... <laughs> These floods start coming up called anger. And, and, and contention and, and, and fear and all of these many, many passions inside of us. 
and the passions really are, the, are the, some of the things that are really going to come down and, and bring our house down if we're not rooted in the Word of God. So if, if we are grounded and rooted in the Word, if we can get this Word of God inside of us, it's the Word of God that's going to hold us in the time of trouble and the time of tribulation. Okay? And the love for the Lord Jesus Christ. We're a message. We have a message. We're in a church that preaches that falling in love with Jesus Christ is the highest and most sublime thing that can happen to a human being. We're preaching a bridal message. And it dawned on me the other day that when a person goes up to the altar, that the, 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 the bride comes up to the altar, right? When she comes to that altar, why is she there? Usually. I mean, there's a lot of... Because she loves the bridegroom. She loves the one that's standing there waiting for her. Okay? She's not there because usually because he has money or because he's, <laughs> he's got a good position or she's going to get her immigration papers or whatever <laughs> the reason might be, but she's there because she's fallen in love with him. So that in the end times, our love for Jesus Christ, our personal relationship with him, which really is the rock, this word, this is what's going to hold us in the end times. This is what we have to get hold of. This is why it's urgent for you to get in the notes and get the tapes and get the Word of God and, and, and study and, and pray and, and get this relationship, this love relationship with Jesus and the Word of God. So if, if, you're, if, you're, if you're doing this, you're hearing and you're doing, you're hearing and you're doing, and you're in the Word of God, then in, when, the, when these things come against you, you're going to be able to stand and you're going to be able to understand what God is doing. Because the, the Word itself will be speaking to you through through the circumstances, the, the Spirit of God will be flowing and the Spirit of God will be able to show you different things that are going on and why. And the Spirit of God will say, well, you remember that sermon over there? And you'll go pick up some notes and there'll be the answer. Or you'll just pull off a tape and there's the answer. Or you'll, you'll pick up your Bible and open it up and there's the answer. The Spirit and the Word will help you understand what, what the answer is in that situation. Okay? Then it mentions here another type of person. What's the other type of person? What's the other type of person? One's a wise person and the other's a foolish man. Foolish man. Remember the little song? The wise man built his house upon a rock. And the other man built his house where? Sand. <clears throat> where is the sand? In a low place. And so this, this man here built a house on the, on the sand, but this house didn't stand. Right? The sand speaks of people's opinions. Speaks of people's uh, doctrines and philosophies. And if we live in a world today that's full of opinions and doctrines and philosophies, <laughs> we're, living, we're living in that age right now. There's more religions now than I think ever have been on the face of the earth. You can go into a Bible bookstore and you can buy, buy books on the different cults and the different religions. And, and page after page after page, there's, it's just the world is full of ideas. So, so many people, <laughs> and I listen to the radio sometimes, because I leave it on for my two little dogs. So when I come in the house, sometimes these preachers are on, and I hear some of the some of the most ridiculous things coming over the airwaves. So that's hitting us. And our, our, the people, like you said, in, in sometimes in our own church, they come with their opinions about different things. And the the foolish man is going to build his house upon those opinions, not upon the rock, not upon all doctrine. Not upon all reproof, not upon all correction, not upon instruction in righteousness, but that a foolish person is the one that's going to build upon the sand of people's opinions. So what, what, what are we going to do then when these things come at us? What are we going to do then when, when, people, when people say, that's not right, it's this way. When this, is, this isn't right, it's this way. We need to run to the Word of God. And we need to get out our concordance. We need to come to, the, to our prayer closet and we need to start seeking God if we don't know the answer. And say, God, what is your answer? What do you have written about that? Okay, Lord, you said here that a woman is to dress in humble apparel. 
but the, the, the inner part, the inner man is to shine out. Now this person over here is telling me something else. And, and you stand then at a crossroads where, where, you can, where you're going to have to decide, are you going to accept the sand or are you going to accept the rock of God's Word? Hey, hey, hey. Hallelujah. And if you choose the sand, after a while, God's going to keep blowing on you because He's going to try and get you back over here. And if you don't, after a while, your house is going to hit the sand and you're going to, you're going to go down and you're going to be destroyed with the winds and the rain and the floods. But if you choose the right way, you choose God's Word, and, and it doesn't matter. This world is so corrupt. The, the, the thinking, even in the religious world, is so, so twisted in these last days. And it's going to get more twisted because the devil is infiltrating so many, so many churches, so many Christians' minds, so many uh, people with their guard down. That it's, it's so easy just to get a little bit of twisting in there that we're going to have to be on guard as never, ever before. And we're going to have to just simply say, Lord, you said it. I'm going to believe it like you said it in black and white. You said, you said to dress simple. You said uh, no pants. You said uh, no swimming suits because the nakedness is a, is, a, is a shame. I don't care if the pastor's wife goes swimming every week. God said in his word that we're to be holy and a separated and a different and a, and a peculiar people. And I want to be peculiar, Lord. I want to be different. I want to be, I want to be one of those that goes up that, that, that aisle someday to be your bride. And so we're, we're going to have to make a decision on, on if, we, if we're going to believe God's Word as it's written, as it is in black and white, or somebody's opinion over here. And God has given us, God has given us His Word. He's given us, he's given us counselors. Y'all, if you, if you can't get an answer where you are, you can write somebody. You can call somebody and get an answer from Jeff. You can get an answer from... You call Clement. He knows just about every tape up there by heart. You say, Clement, does Sister X ever preach on such and such? Send me a tape. And, and you can get the tape right, right from the home front if there is something taught on that. And he'll, he'll let you know. He's got a mind that's, that's absolutely fabulous. So you can, you can get into the Word of God and find out. Now supposing it's something that's not exactly in black and white. That's where the problem comes, Right? when it's something kind of shady. That's why we need to... That's another reason why we need to get into the Word a lot. Because a lot of things aren't just in black and white. Um, shaving the legs. There's no verse in there, Thou shalt not shave thy legs. Okay? <laughs> they've, come, they've come up against me with that. Well, it doesn't say in the Bible, you know, Thou shalt not. Okay? But the principles of God are there. And so, you, if you can get with somebody that knows enough of the principles, they can bring it together for you and show you those principles in God's Word, then a lot of times you can get the answer. Amen. Amen. Um, just one question. Mm-hmm. Because it's so powerful how I thank you, Lord. I thank you for thinking. Because we was talking about that just before we came, about shaving the legs and stuff, because she was telling me about different things she didn't understand. That's why I asked the question. She... Uh, Sister Judy. Judy. And uh, here the Lord brought it forward about shaving the leg. He didn't even know we were talking about shaving the leg. Can you like, elaborate mm-hmm. more on that? Yeah. Let me finish this and then we can we can go into some of that. And Sister Julia had a question too. Now that we've... Um, my question is, um, when you, because I remember this place right here, when you were talking about that, I was like, this place on here right now. And so I, I guess, because I'm here, Basically, you're talking about separation. separation. Basically, yeah. Um, you'll find in the world, the religious world today, that they won't understand us, and there'll be very, very few churches that will that will stand up for separation. There are a few. Um, there's there's a few. We uh, we got into um, in, in San Diego a group that didn't have a church 
somehow got in contact with the, one of the ladies that was trying to find a church for us. And anyway, they, they're coming with us. There's about 20, 20 adults, and it's all one family. And they, they sing and they play guitar. I mean, it's a whole musical family. That, and, and they don't have jewelry. They don't have makeup. They, they have long hair. And they, they wore dresses when they came to church, at least. And I got to thinking, there, there are some people that will listen and will hear. But the religious world as a whole is backslidden. It's, it, it, they, they've left the standards of God because of the pressures and the, and the, and the things that are, the devil's preparing for the, for the end time. And he's trying to, to put out the power of the Christian world. And part of the power comes, part of the power, one of the reasons the power comes is because of the separation. And without separation, then, then there's, there's very little power. And if there's very little power, then the devil doesn't have to worry about us. But if we can keep our separations, then, then the power of God, the Spirit of God, the Word of God can flow in us, and, and there'll be it, it's like a barrier around us, a wall of protection around us to keep these spirits from the world of coming in against us. So the devil hates it, and he's, and he's going to try everything in his power. And uh, from a natural standpoint... A lot of times it's not easy to walk the road of separation, especially in the work, in the work field, in, um, when you're out with other people and in, uh, where you have to, you know, be presentable and, you know, you wear earrings and you dress up and so on and so forth and lipstick and all this sort of stuff. It's come back. It didn't used to be, but it's come back. It's hard to go against that. It's hard to go against that. And that's, that's then where you, have to, where you have to stand on this rock and say, Lord... You are the rock. I can't do it. I can't make the decision. You're the rock. You're the strong one. You're the, you're the, you're the, the firmness of, of eternity. Lord, I'm weak, but you can do it in me. Give me strength to stand and give me a will and a determination to do what is your will that's specified here in the Word of God. And God will do it. Not just on not just on separation, but on so many so many other things, Amen. just daily things of, of praying and studying, and God will put that within you, because He is the strength, and in our weakness, His strength is made perfect. So, in, in as far as as far as separation is concerned, it's a matter of getting down and understanding whether whether it's really a battle in yourself or it's a battle that's coming from the outside. And if it's a battle that's coming from inside, you fight it one way. And if it's a battle that's coming from the outside, then, then you fight it a different way. And we'll get into that a little bit later on too. But um, it's, it's hard being alone. All of you that are here are alone. Right? All of you are separated. None of you are in a Christ Gospel Church. <laughs> you, some of you have been. I think Melanie's the only one that never really... Oh, yes, you were. You were yeah, you were in Christ Gospel. I'm sorry. All of you have been in, have been in one, okay? And now you're out in a solitary place. And so the fact that you were in once, you have a vision. You have a goal. You have a call. The fact that you're here today means that there's something that God wants you to walk. There's something that God has in front of you and He's saying, come on, time's running short, time's getting late. It's time to run. It's time to hurry. And so the devil knows that. And he's trying to do everything in his power to, to break you and to let you you all fall back into the, the, the denominational stream. Stay saved for a while anyway and, and, and just flow along with the rest of them. But the bride is a peculiar, strange, odd group of people that's going to be very different from the rest of the, of the group of Christians. And she's going to have to have a backbone that's stronger than others. And that backbone is going to come from Jesus Christ, from the Word of God, working within her. Amen? Amen. So when, when these things come against you, one of, the, one of the things you need to do is to run to the Word of God and, and seek. Uh, you got, all of you have concordances? Amen. Strong concordance? Then you can look up that way. You can look up Bible verses that way that have to do with whatever the problem is, what, whatever it is, your flesh or, or people or opinions of, of separation, you can start looking up Bible verses. And, and 
For example, just look up every time the Lord said, Ye shall be peculiar. You are a holy people. Look up the word holiness. Look up the word holy. Look up the word different. Look up the word peculiar. All the times that God said this about His people. And look up the word separate and separated and separation in the, in the concordance. And you get these Bible verses inside of you. Then when the devil comes at you, then, then these Bible verses are going to jump up inside of you and they're going to start defending, hey, hey, defending against those lies and there'll be a shield there for you at least long enough for you to run to the prayer closet and get hold of Jesus and say, help me, Lord, help me, help me, help me, help me, Lord, help me. And he will help you through the word. And there's a few other things, but... Well, if, we, if we're um, like growing in God, the thing that I have a little bit of confusion about is, is yes, I've heard and I've acted and separated and, and done these things on faith. And yet, um, and now I'm in a different space in my life where, you know, I, I, I'm choosing all over again, it seems. And I'm not so sure I want to do these things on faith. I'm like, I might be working on something else or I may, like, let me ignore that for a while, God, um, until I'm ready to hear that, and or else, you know, those kind of things are happening to me. And, and part of it is, is I accept that the almost because um, if that's the only level I can accept Jesus at, at that day, mm-hmm. that's what I accept, and, and accepting myself and, and where I am with the Lord. Also, I might not be, you know, on the on the top of the rock that day, and. You know, or understand truly, you know, or really have it come from the inside to be a holy woman or to be that way. But, um, and, and, and also, I don't know if I'm making sense, but it, also going to some of these other churches that have all the makeup and jewelry on, sure, a lot of it shocks me when I go in there to see it. And I, I know the difference, but I'll still, like, you know, put a little bit of makeup on when I go here and there so I can just fit in a little bit, you know. Uh, maybe I'm not totally separated, but I I understand it. Um, I mean, is is maybe I'm just getting some of the word, or I'm getting a part, a facet of this jewel that God's got there for us, or I'm seeing a part of it. And I think that's how we are as a body of Christ. That there's like little parts that shine out, and, and uh, I don't know. I don't. I really had a lot of. I've been fighting a lot with this too because Sister Hicks, like she grew up in the Lord, you know. Mm-hmm. Lord showed her these things personally, and I think in my life I want I want God to show me these things personally. Maybe I'm not selling out by not going <clears throat> full steam ahead, you know, in, in the way that I've been taught by somebody else. But I want to understand it inside of me, you know, and and, um, and I might not be able to chew off all that. I think, you know, maybe that's yeah. not. <laughs> <laughs> well, God, God. Um, God doesn't say, okay, jump from the sand to the rock. Okay? On one side. On one side. But, He's not going to give you something and expect you to do something that you can't do. Okay? If, if you've seen it in the Word of God, then that means you can do it through Jesus Christ. Okay? A lot of people do wait for conviction. Do wait for um, some type of a special experience. And sometimes that's necessary and sometimes that's what it takes for that person to move onward and move upward. Okay? It's happened to all of us. We hear and we hear. If we, if, we all, if we all could write down all the things that we've heard and we put on the other side what we're doing, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's a great big old long list over there and a little tiny list over on the right-hand side, right? There's none of us that are living up to a fraction of what we've heard. In, this, in, the, in the crucified way. But um, if I'm standing, let's say I'm, I'll move this up a little bit so you can see. If I'm standing on this, this place here, just by being in the crucified way, I know that there's pasture, there's pastures here and there's pastures here. Okay? I know that. You all know it? Okay. And if you're, if you're on one level, It's up to me to start praying and say, God, lift me up to a higher plane. Lift me up to this other place. Take me higher. I want to know you more. I want to understand more about you. I want to be more like you. 
I mean? So then we have to, our, our choice, our choice is that. Lord, they're telling me all of this. I'm inclined to this over here. But I see that you have a higher plane. You have a higher walk. You have a higher way up here. Lord, I see them down there. I see where I am. And they're pulling me. But Jesus, I want to go higher. I want to come up here. I want to be more like you. This is the part that we can do in the midst between the rock and the between the rock and the sand. <laughs> Not between the rock and the hard place, between the rock and the sand. This is what we can start doing when we start saying, Jesus, liberate me and free me from this flesh. Liberate and free me from these Egyptians that are holding me back. Yeah. And, and let me go higher with you, Lord. Let me let me find another plane that I haven't eaten of, that I haven't tasted of, but I know that there's more. Because God's Word and God in His person is, is, is infinite. And we can never say this is all that God has. A lot of people do, but then they're stranded, they're stalled, and they'll never grow any higher than that. I've got a cousin that thinks she's already in the bride. And she hasn't even started down here. She'll never grow. She'll never reach it. Unless her eyes get open and she starts crying out. So it doesn't matter what state we're at. We can say, okay, Lord, I've eaten this, I've eaten here, I've eaten here, I've eaten here, I've eaten here. All of that, all of that grass is good, all of that word is good, all of that spirit's good. Lord, I'll just sit down here for a while and wait for you to come. At that moment, if you stop moving, you've stopped growing. If you stop, if you stop progressing, you've stopped growing. And just by knowing how things are, if I, if I let this go, where's it going to go? Is it going to keep going up? No. Is it going to keep going up? No. Uh-uh. It's going to start coming down, coming down, coming down, coming down. So just by the, the law of gravity, it's dangerous once you start up the hill to sit down for very long because you're going to start slipping and slipping and slipping until all of this, this is nothing and all the sand out here looks normal and natural to you again. So, so our job is to cry out to go higher. Amen? And um, while, when we're at this state here, when we're on this, on this uh, stairway here, we can, we, can, um, we can do one of two things. We can walk by blind faith and say, Lord, you said it in your word. And I'm going to step out on that and just trust you to give me the strength to do what you want me to do. Or we can, we can wait for God to give us a revelation and, of that but I'll tell you something today on judgment day God's going to judge us by what's here and if we've read it in his word then we're going to be judged by what's in his word not what has been revealed to us so people that have never read about dancing he's not going to be quite as hard on them about not dancing if they never opened up the Psalms to read it okay if they never, if they never understood it they never saw it but we've read it and if we don't do it then he's going to say, but it was, in, it was in the Word of God. See? So it's dangerous to say, Lord, give me a revelation when we already know what his will and what his Word is. Because then the devil's going to come in with a lot of things that will, that will convince you that you're okay sitting down on this, on this step. When all the time God's using this step because he wants to move you higher. But the only way you're going to be moved higher is by going to the cross of Calvary and getting rid of those things inside of you that are being drawn to staying there that are being drawn to the world or these passions that are coming up inside of you of whatever it is that the Lord's wanting to deal with jealousy, anger, whatever and, and, and the Lord will, will, will put you there and you'll, you'll come up against and, and you won't move until you deal I mean God, God in His mercy He's going to let you boom the <laughs> hit your head there until you deal you're not going to say okay ah. <laughs> let me climb higher Lord it's not going to work that's a problem because I was sharing with Sister Shay about, um, about coming out here to California and I was so not feel like I was coming back to Egypt because this is where you know I was in my back to the there's a lot of memories there's people that I don't want to see and for a while I said, Lord, what are you doing to me? I, you know, I, you would have me sit by, I mean, I would go through 
where I hear someone that I would never want to see again in my life, you know? And I, and I felt like, I said, well, well, you know, and then once the sheriff said that, you know, we don't want you to have any fears, you know, because I kind of felt like I was running away from this part of my life. I never wanted it to come up again. I want to be very involved with the bottom of the so to speak. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and now that I'm back here, it, is, it was very hard for a while, you know, why? Well, God's the head over everything. That's where I was basically where I was going in one sense with this with this that I have on the screen right here. If it says in it says in Ephesians that we're to grow up into Christ, which is the head. Right? That's why I asked a while ago, where's the sand? The sand's down here in the feet. But the head is Christ. Okay? If we're, if we're going by man's opinions, we're going to be down in the sand. We're going to be down in the low place. We're, we're, I mean, we're going to be babies down here without any stature. Okay? Christ is the head. And if he's the head, then he's the head over everything in our life. Okay? Now, some people take that and say, okay, well, then he's the head of, of somebody going out and sinning, or he's the head of this over here, or he's the head of this, this person's bad attitude over there. I'm, I'm talking about his will for going on for God, Christian, Christ gospel, wanting to be in the bride people, okay? All of this other side, I don't want to get distracted on that, okay? He's the head, and if he brought you back here, and he's put you in situations, and all of you, I've talked to each different ones of you through, through time, he's put you in different situations because he wants you to overcome in that situation. He wants you to, to realize to, and He wants you to grow. He wants you to use it as a stepping stone to come out. Now, I, I use that in, um, with caution in the way I'm saying it right now and I'll explain where I'm going in just a minute. When I first got in the crucified way, I came out of, I was in my last year of medical school while I was doing my internship, my, my ser social service for the government. And I got in contact with some atheistic, humanistic psychologists. You all that are in, I don't know if you all have read of Eric Fromm's works. Mm -hmm, the Art of Love. And it's not physical love, it's, it's loving humanity, loving, loving life. It's, it's, a, it's a beautiful book. <laughs> but it's got, it's got all of these antichrist spirits in it. And so I was, I, was, I was swept away with this. And I got, I got basically possessed with Antichrist spirits. Okay? So they prayed for me at some, one convention back in 68. I got liberated. And, and um, Dave Rich was in at that time. And he's the one that basically prayed for me at that time. <clears throat> and he told me, along with Brother David Garber, who was the, the principal of the school down in Mexico, they both told me, don't go back to that doctor and don't go back to that place. So it, I say it with, with caution, okay? But you didn't go back voluntarily. Your husband was shipped back here, right? So you're back here because the Army or the Air Force, what are you, Air Force? Yeah, both, in. both of you? Yeah. Okay, so Uncle Sam sent you here. Uh -huh. Okay. How many of you know you have an old heart? And you have a new heart. Okay? Let's put the old heart here. And you have a new heart. What's in the old heart? Fornication. <laughs> okay, fornication. Deceit. Blasphemy. Evil Let's go on some of the more common ones. What was, what did Julia say? Fear? Anger? What else? Adultery. Adultery. Natural and spiritual. Sometimes we can point the finger at somebody else that's doing it in the natural. And we're just as guilty in the spiritual. Amen. Idolatry. Idolatry. Oh, here I come. 
you bow down to me. <laughs> Did I? Idolatry. Me. Uh, and so on and so forth. Resentments. Past resentments. All of us have chains of those. Or we'll have less, I hope. Resentments. And, and all of these are in.